Hey everybody, um, in this video I'm going to start talking about picking point groups. Now in the last couple of videos I talked about basic symmetry operations, so um, now that you're familiar with those, we can start figuring out the point groups of molecules. And point groups, they are basically a set of symmetry operations that apply to a molecule. And once you figure out the point group correctly, you can just go and look at a character table and it will give you all the involved symmetry operations and then you can find these things called irreducible representations and from that you can start figuring out how many infrared stretching frequencies and the kind of molecular orbital overlap that's going to occur so once you figure out the point group it's pretty much just plug and chug from there but picking point groups is not always easy so last time um, I did talk about water, H2O, a little bit. And I mentioned it has a C2 axis right down the middle. And that says only rotation axis. Okay. Um, so, the other thing it has is a reflection plane. It actually has two reflection planes. There's one right there. And then we got another one that goes straight through like that. And this molecule happens to be in the C2V point group. And that is because it only has one rotation axis, which is a which is the two. It's got the C2 axis. And it only has one set of mirror planes which are not perpendicular to the main rotation axis. And so now that you've found the C2V point group, you can go consult the character table for the C2V point group right here. And you can see there's the E, there's the C2. Well, everything has E, by the way. Um, there is one of your mirror planes. Maybe you didn't even know that you had a second mirror plane in there, but it will tell you that if you're in the C2V point group, you definitely have two mirror planes. So let's go back. Um, if this is, if it just feels like I'm jumping right in, I'm doing that on purpose. I'm just going to show you the C and the D um, family point groups, and then I'm going to show you everything else just because I think you're going to use C and D the most. So. Let's do another example. Um, let's do an imaginary molecule that it's just going to be three atoms. And they're going to be in a planar triangle formation. Okay. Now, you might say right away, well, that's got a C3. It does, right? It's got a C3 right down the middle, or right down the top from where we're looking at it. There is the C3. But also, if we rotate it till it's horizontal, you can see it's got a C2. So if you have two axes of rotation that are perpendicular to each other, like we have a C3 plus we have a C2. That makes it in the D family. It's the, the D point group family. And there are two, there are multiple parts of the D family, but because this is our primary rotation axis, okay, the C3, the highest number is always the primary rotation axis. If you have a mirror plane horizontal to that, or um, perpendicular to it, I guess. It is in the D3H family. All right. So if you want to check it out, here's the D3H point group or uh, symmetry table, I guess. Um, the uh, D3H character table is right here, and you can see there's the mirror plane that's horizontal to it. And we didn't even talk about this right here. Um, but you don't even need to pick the point group, so that's what's really nice about character tables. 
once you find the correct point group, you know every other symmetry operation in it because mathematically they're all contained if they're in that point group. So um, let's talk about just like an overview of the whole point group system. The first three examples people usually give you when they start talking about point groups are um, C1, which is only E, and CS, which is only E plus a mirror plane. And then finally there's CI. which is only E plus an inversion center. Now, by the way, it's pretty much implied that E is part of everything. So if you've got C1, it means it has no symmetry. So C1 would be something um, either very chiral, like I know I used this as an earlier example. Uh, I'm going to go off the page here. Let me get back on. That's E. There's nothing else. No symmetry operations besides the identity operation. Um, and uh, so for an example of CS with only a mirror plane, a pretty typical example of this would be an ethane type molecule. Now the mirror plane in this case, it's directly in the page. So that H is reflected on itself, that H is reflected on itself, the C and the double bond and the other C, they're reflected and these are each reflected on themselves. It's not this way. And it's not, it's not any other way, it's just in the page. So you've only got one reflection plane and it's only right through the molecules, all of the molecules. So, and then finally, CI, um, all you have in is inversion center. So, a good example of that is like another ethane type complex. I'm sorry, the one above is an ethene. So, we'll use halogens again nice ways to reduce symmetry. Okay, and you might start to see that on the opposite carbons, all of the substituted atoms on there they're all completely opposite. So this, it comes up from the board, or from the paper, and then it goes all the way back through the paper and there. And then this, the exact opposite, it's coming towards us, and then it goes back and there. And the inversion center is right here. Same thing with the hydrogens, they just kind of switch places. And that's all you have. You can't you can't do reflection plane. You're not going to be able to um, do any rotations. All you have is an inversion. Um, so these are known as the low symmetry groups. And um, next time I'll talk about the high symmetry groups, and I'll start talking about how to interpret the um, flow charts that you're invariably given and. So that's what we'll do next time. All right, see you guys.